Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5pm Pacific Time in the United States, which is 11am in Australia or 1am if you're in the UK. Remember, if you miss the live streams, you can catch up with the premiere event streams on a Friday and Saturday at 2pm Pacific Time in the US, which is 8am in Australia or 10pm, I believe, if you're in the UK. <laughs> I hope all you guys and girls are well. Sniper Reco, hey to you. Sniper Girl, hi to you. And Tap Crush, hi to you as well. It's good to see you guys. I hope you're all well. Uh, remember, if you've got any questions, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me if I can help in any way. I'm happy to try. Uh, if you just want to pop in and say hello like these guys and girls, that's always welcome. But if all you want to do is watch, then that's completely fine. Uh, we have finished the modeling stage, uh, apart from just one asset that I need to fix up inside of the, um, the dome of the, uh, terrace. Once I've done, once I've done that, we're going to start, we're going to jump straight into algorithmic substance painter and start texturing up the assets. <laughs> Sniper girl says, been sick today still, will live. Oh no, that's no good Sniper girl. I know you were sick yesterday as well. Well, stay warm or cool, whatever, however, whatever the temperature is, wherever you are. It's getting cooler here in, uh, in Australia now. Uh, Tapcrat says, we don't bite, most of us at least. <laughs> painter hype, that's right, that algorithmic painter hype. Uh, Sniper Girl says to Tapcrat, we're not supposed to bite. <laughs> we're not supposed to bite, question mark. They won't bite you. They're all very, very friendly, very nice people. Uh, remember too, guys, if you uh, haven't joined the Pildust 3D Discord server, you should. Uh, everyone can post links to their work in the Discord. There's a gallery section. There is a uh, folio section where you can post links to your art station, all that sort of stuff. And soon, thanks to um, Sniper Echo's suggestion, there will be a section for tutorials and things. So we should have all the bases covered. Smurfberry Barbecue, good to see you, Smurfberry. And Smurfberry says, I bite. <laughs> Uh, Sniper is asking, uh, any of you guys ever exported a Max Maya camera animation into UE4? I have. <laughs> I've exported an animation using FBX from Max into UE4. I didn't use it though. I, I created an animation because I, I wanted like a, a jitter animation for my camera because to give it more of a, um, less of a perfect look while, while it was moving on its rails. So I created like just a jitter animation. But I, and I did import it into UE4, but didn't end up um, actually using it. Uh, Sniper Girl says, I also bite and have a ban hammer. <laughs> there you go. You've been warned. Um, tap Crush says, hey, Snowberry. Snowberry says, yo, Tap Crush. <laughs> uh, tap Crush says, Snap, just noticed your swords, Sniper Girl. Awesome. Am I missing? Let me, let me check the Discord here. What? 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 I see Android Lust has been posting in the Discord. He's posted some images in the gallery section. Oh, he's talking about the moderator icon in, in Twitch chat. I, oh, I was looking in Discord here. I'm looking through the gallery thinking, where is where is Sniper Girl's sword? I don't see a sword in here. <laughs> Am I going blind? The sniper says, I think uh, it works fine with Sequencer. Yeah, Sequencer is what I was using. Uh, but not sure about the new animation system. Ah, oh, okay. Well, yeah, the last version that I used of UE4 was 4.19. And I did import it into Sequencer to you, well, to test it, but I didn't use it. Uh, I haven't tried the new system yet. Smurfberry says I should make a sword. Sniper Girl says, yeah, I should make one as well. And Smurfberry says a legendary sword with missiles and chainsaws. Ooh, that sounds cool. I'm just going to wait to see if um, Android Lust pops into the chat. And if he does, then we'll check out his work. And if he doesn't, well, you guys can check it out on Discord. But it's very nice. He always does really nice character stuff. So you should certainly check it out on Discord. 
So if you are here, Android Lust, let me know and I will show your work. Um, Sniper Rico says, I'm sure there's a sword in the van. <laughs> I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's a sword, a couple of guns. And Sniper Girl says to Smurfer, you've got to be on fire too. That's right. Unless it's on fire, it doesn't count. All the things. Add all the things. What is this? Oh, Firefox. What a surprise. Yes, add all the things. All the things. So, uh, yes, yeah, so back into Max. <laughs> we finished uh, the modeling stage, but there is just one more thing in here. This little um, bit that runs around the inside of the model underneath of the dome in here. I need to... Um, I don't think it's been champered either, so... Ooh, maybe we'll get a, a chance to look at the new champer modifier in 3D Studio Max 2020. Won't that be exciting? That, that amazing new feature in 2020. Just keeping an eye on OBS and everything. Uh, Sniper Girl says, speaking of adding all the things, I've been debating if I should add a minigun on top of the hood of the van. <laughs> and van's got a lot going on, Sniper Girl, a lot going on. <laughs> hey, it could look cool. Just to, less is more, always remember that. I'm not suggesting it won't look cool. I'm just saying you've got to be careful you don't start to overload the model a bit. Yeah, I'm thinking it might be overkill too, Sniper Girl. I mean, uh, you won't... Yeah. If you want to do it, do it. Um, but you've got a lot going on on the van and probably doesn't need a gun on top. But hey, like I said, it's your van, your work, your art. If you want to do it, do it. You can always remove it, I guess, if you don't like it. Uh, Smurfberry says, yeah, that's too much. Snappy Curl says, yeah, exactly, might be too much. Yeah, I think I think it might be, personally, I think it might be a bit much as well, but um, it's your art. Like Bob Ross says, it's your world. You do what you want. I'm just going to isolate this ring. And it's not champered, so let's do that. Let's look at this new amazing champer modifier in 3D Studio Max. Uh, Sniper Echo says to Sniper Girl, don't tell him everything. We need to have some tricks up our sleeves to escape the hollow. That's right. If I know it all, then I'm never gonna I'm, I'm gonna make it so you can never get out of the hollow. Sniper Girl says, uh, I might model one just to see what it looks like. You can always cut it out. That's exactly right. It, you know, it could be just a fun thing for you to learn to, mo to, to model up anyway. And then if you don't use it, maybe you can use it on something else that you create further down the track. You know what I mean? put it in your folio and attach it to something else later on. Maybe a mech or something. So, yep, I'm, I'm all for doing it, even if you don't use it. Uh, this champer modifier. Let's have a look at this amazing new champer modifier. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I've actually not used it myself yet. So. Here we go. I think it's just called champer. Ah, okay, so what have we got here now? What, 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 what goodies? What am I doing? What goodies do I have to work with? Uh, Sniper Echo says, side note, it's not like I can butter my bread in the kitchen before getting in the van. Well, that's right, Sniper Echo, you can't. It's not like you can go to the bathroom before you butter your bread in the kitchen before getting into the van either. And it's not like you can have a nap before going to the bathroom, before going to the kitchen to butter your bread, before getting in the van. None of those things are possible. At the moment, anyway. Cheeky. You're all cheeky. I'm going to give you all a raspberry. <laughs> he does it better than I ever could. Um, Champo, so what do we got? We've got... Um, oh, okay, we've got different options for mitering now. Instead of just uh, trying quad, we've got uniform, which is nice. With an edge bias, which is nice. Okay, this is nice too, but we can crease by a fixed amount by the crease weight, which is nice, or the legacy. 
Smurberry says, and you can't get hammered on wine before taking a nap before going to the bathroom before making yourself a sandwich. No, you can't because there is no um, ba there is no wine cellar yet either. All these things you want me to put in. So we've got to put in, when we go back to make the game, we've got to put in a bedroom, a bathroom, a kitchen, a wine cellar. And there are actually a couple of other rooms we didn't furnish up, which need to be furnished up. And we've got to work out what they're going to be. Um, I want to put fireplaces into them, I think, because that'll look really cool. But as far as lighting goes, maybe sitting rooms or something. I don't know. We'll work it out. We'll work it out when we start working on it. Sniper Girl says, uh, Ban has a bed and a toilet mounted on the roof. Thanks. Just got to move the toilet down and you're good. Well, there you go. The house on the hollow doesn't even need a toilet. Then there's a toilet in the van. Sniper says, I'm not liking this game much. <laughs> Sniper Girl says, yeah, don't think I ever took screen off the roof assets. Uh, <laughs> you guys, you guys. Um, again, I'm just keeping an eye on OBS, although Twitch has been great. OBS has been stable for the last couple of weeks. Twitch has been good. Um, what else? What else has surprised me that's been good? Clear the main. Oh, transcoding. We've, we've got transcoding pretty much constantly, so that's been good too. I haven't, I haven't had to start and stop and start and stop, which is always nice. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to the champion modifier, weren't we? So yes, this is this is nice now that these options they've given us by crease weight. That that's actually that's actually really cool. Being able to crease by weight. The segments, that's all the same. Oh, you can inset now instead of um so you can do an inset chamfer. So instead of chamfering out, we can chamfer in, which is nice. And then we have our selections. Uh oh, anything new in the selection stack? Might be a couple of new ones there. And then we've got filtering. Material ID has always been there, I believe. And then we've got smoothing. Nice. Yeah, I like that. They've, they've added some really useful new features to the Champer. Okay, Sniper says, okay, how do I word this? A sniper girl, someone could sit on the toilet while firing the minigun. No, oh, that's right. Multitask. Just a thought. So yeah, that's that's true. They could be sitting on the toilet firing off the minigun. No one's going to sneak up on you while you're on the toilet. Um, okay, before I throw down that new chamfer modifier, let's convert this to an... Uh, actually, just before I do a convert, we've got a little bit of edge stepping there. Now, normally that would be okay, but... Because I'm making this for, for to do renderings with um, and not so much as a game model, I'm going to up that a little bit more. So I'll just take it up to 64 so it's a little bit smoother. And let's convert it to an edit poly because we're not making any more adjustments. And let us select our edges. We really only have to worry about uh, chamfering up these inside edges because the rest of it's hidden inside the model. So, so I'm only going to chamfer the two inside edges here that we actually see, not the ones around the outside. Uh, Snappy Girl says, for the minigun, I was thinking of adding a cable that goes through the metal grate that's on the windshield and kind of just pull uh, and kind of just pull it to shoot the gun and a shit caught. <laughs> that reminds me, did you, did you guys ever watch Fear the Walking Dead, the last season of it? You know how they had that um, military style what do they call those things? Like, I don't want, I want to say SUV, but it's not an SUV. Mini truck thing. And uh, they could fire the guns from inside by pulling on levers and stuff, which was cool. Although the Fear of the Walking Dead series is boring. <laughs> but that was a cool, cool little military truck thing. It shows how much I know about military terminology truck thing. Um... <laughs> Sniper says, wait, you could chamfer, chamfer in the pre in previous versions of Max. Yes, you could. Cheeky. Uh, Android Lust. Oh, Android Lust, you are here. Well, I'll show your work soon. Android Lust says, forgot about the time. Hey, all. 
I saw you posted in Discord. I was uh, asking earlier in the stream whether you were here because I noticed you were in Discord. Uh, I'll show I'll show those models in two seconds. But it's good to see you. Uh, Sniper Echo says this van is going to have a spin-off game. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Sniper says, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, says I haven't seen it so much, so I assume it was some sort of armored personal carrier or MRAP. Yeah, I think that's that's probably what they call it, armored personal carrier thing. It was like a mini, mini, mini. You know the SWAT vans that you guys in the United States have. You know, the, well, we we have SWAT here, I think, as well. Those sort of vans where it's like the double doors in the back. Uh, two two people generally sit in the, in the front, like a big box at the back. Yeah, like like a like a like maybe like a, a half ton truck sort of thing, tiny truck. That's what I'm talking about. But I think you might be right, Smoker. I think it's called uh, Personnel Carrier. Android Lust says, I just call those armored vehicles. Well, that's a good word for it too. APC, perhaps. All, yeah, all these terminologies, that's probably what it is. Again, I'm not up on my military lingo. Let's throw the champer down now that we've got those edges selected. And let's see what Max is doing with its new champer modifier. We want to pull it in because we don't want to champering up like that. Although that is nice how far, how far you can go up with your champer now. We want to go the other way. Uh, I always like to do three segments because it makes a nice smooth curve. Let's just zoom in here a little bit. Um, and let's just play without smoothing a little bit as well. Might just pull back a little bit on the amount, I think. That should probably be good. Just a little bit of a smooth edge to it. Android Lust says, but there are tons of armored vehicles. Generally, at least where I live, those type of trucks get transfer money from businesses. Yeah, that's actually, yeah, they're, they're like that. But they're, I think, a little bit bigger than those, like, armored security vehicles that transfer the money between the banks. But that's what they look like. They're that sort of shape. And they generally have, like, four, four guys in the back dressed in black with machine guns sort of things that jump out the back when, when they park and open up. Because we had a scare here in Melbourne um, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was. Uh, there was a report of somebody with a gun on one of the trains in the city, in Melbourne City. But it turned out just to be a busker. He was cleaning his musical instrument and people freaked out and called the police and thought it was a gun. And so all this SWAT team started converging on one of the stations in the city and freaked everybody out on the train. I mean, you know, it, it, people are worried because of the Christchurch thing. So it's understandable. But I, I just felt for this poor busker who got surrounded all of a sudden by like, you know, 18 SWAT people with machine guns because he was just cleaning his instrument, but he, but he didn't have a gun. It was a false alarm. All right, so that champ is okay. Let's just collapse that stack. Yes, just a little bit of a smooth edge there, which is good. Just on the inside ring. Uh, let's send it over to Ryzen UV so we can UV map it. And let us try, let's try the first one. Why not? Why not? First one doesn't look great. I mean, it's not terrible, but we're getting stretching and stuff, so that's not great. Let's try the second one. Yeah, again, second one, not great. The, 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 the algorithms it uses to do these unwraps the base, uh, different ones will work better on different types of meshes. Snapper so says, "Re, re." <laughs> Let's try the next one. You see, I'm trying to not get distracted today. Try. Uh, that's not a great unwrap. Actually, that should have been a good unwrap, though. Let me just have a look at that again. Because it's unwrapping along the edges, which is good.
Why? Oh, I see. I, I feel, what, it hasn't done a, a run and wrap around the, the center. You know what? I'm, I'm just going to do this by hand. It's just going to be easier. It'll just make it easier. Uh, so that's the problem. It, it When it did the cut, it, um, it just did the outside ring, not the inside ring. the one around the bottom as well. Okay, let's uh, do another uh, unwrap, an optimize, and a repack. Let me just turn off those edges, and that should be good. Let's send that back. <laughs> What's this re 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 smithery? You crazy? You cray cray? Um, okay, so I, let's just assign a playing color to that um, asset. So, so far the Champa modifier gets a thumbs up for me in 2020. Worth the price of admission alone. <laughs> no, if, if that was the only, up, um, they, they did a lot of other stuff like the OSL shaders and stuff, they updated all of those made them work with Quicksilver, which is nice if you use Quicksilver, which I don't. Um, but if you do, then hey, that's nice that they work with Quicksilver now. I don't actually tend to use the OSL shaders very much um, because I usually use V-Ray when I do renders. I use V-Ray materials and I don't tend to use OSL shaders very much. Anyway, let's jump out of that. And I think that is everything done as far as modeling and uh, UV mapping goes now. I think, I think we're done as far as the UV maps go. So let's do our usual thing. We'll just do a quick save before we start jumping into uh, Substance Painter to do some texturing. And while that's saving, I can check out um, Android Loss work as well. What's this re-business, you guys? You guys! Cool, uh, Sniper Girl says, posted images on the rooftop assets have everything but a kitchen sink up there. I will check those out. Um, I'm just going to... <laughs> Smurfery's post says, uh, note to self, legendary sword with missiles and chainsaws and discord. Um, I'll check the... Oh, that looks cool actually, Sniper Girl, but let's have a look at Android Lust's character first. Let me just open up my browser. Anyone watching my channel who is new to me, you can go to phildoes3d.com and you can read up on me there, find out about more about me and what I do. I just know, uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> let's have a look at this. Very nice. Always does lovely work. Let me just uh, zoom in a bit here. Yeah, beautiful work, Android Loss. It's always really nice. Nice texturing too. Right, let's have a look at the model shot, the occlusion shot for the model. 
Yeah, again, really nicely modelled. Lovely work. I love to see textured work. And your texturing is great. Uh, and what's this third one we've got here? Okay, this is uh, just a shot of the um, the edge loops. Nicely, N nice, nice, and nice edge loops, uh, which is really important for a character model because if if you don't have nice edge loops, when the animator comes to animate it, they're going to have all sorts of problems. They're not going to be happy with you. Uh, but that's that's nicely done. Very nicely done. An animator should not have a problem animating that model. Lovely. Lovely work. As usual, you always do lovely work. And thanks for letting me show it on stream. And let's have a look at Sniper Girl's uh, van here. You must have a, a huge amount of stuff for your portfolio now, Android Lust. You're a machine when it comes to making models. Um, just keeping an eye on OBS. And this is Sniper Girl's truck with uh, the roof here. It looks really cool. You've got everything but the kitchen sink, that's for sure. I can see that. What, what are these just here? What are they? These two circular pieces here, what, what is that? I, I can see you've got... Um, uh, what do they call that? <laughs> uh, I want to say wrought iron, but it's not wrought iron. It's uh, that spiky fence stuff. My mind, I tell you. Um, Sniper Girl says to Android Lust, it's one of her favorite characters. Amazing work. Android Lust says, huh? Of the I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Well, you hide it really well, Android Lust, if that, that, that's the case. Propane tanks. Uh, I can see. I can see other. I, I mean, I, I I know what most of this is, but I just don't know what these are. Mercury says it looks like a barbecue grill. Oh yeah, I can see the propane tank here. It's a portable heater that is powered by propane. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay. I get it. But no, it's looking very cool. Uh, yeah, I, I think a machine, a machine gun up here would, would be a bit much. Yeah, I think you've got a lot, a lot going on here now. I see. This is a portable barbecue thing here. That's the lid for it, I'm assuming, of the barbecue. Cool. Yeah, I, I think a gun would be too much. But model it because it could be fun for you to do anyway, and um, you can always use it on something else. Android Lust says, how do you plan on strapping it all down? Mm, that's a good question. You might need a couple of straps that you can throw across, you know, that attach to the sides of the uh, van here, the, the roof. But it looks very nice. All you guys have done lovely work. And again, if you're watching me and you're not on the Discord server, please join the Discord because I've just popped a link in Twitch chat. Uh, you can post links to your work in the gallery. You can link to your art station and your portfolio or your demo reel under the um, folios and demo reels chat. And pretty soon we will have the tutorials chat section set up. It's not about listening to me. I swear to God, it's spying on me. How does it know? That, that freaks me out, you know. I, I mean, I, I'm a tinfoil hat wearer at the best of times anyway. And for Nightbot to post that straight after I post, I don't, it's listening, it's watching, it's 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 spying on me, guys. Nightbot is spying on me. A creepy little bot. Are you here? Uh, I see Sniper is asking in um, Discord, but I don't think it... Uh, to Android last, okay. <laughs> Would help if I read the whole text thing, wouldn't it, Sniper Echo? <laughs> in the general chat on Discord, he's asking about Skin Shadow. Okay, so let's start texturing, shall we? 
Uh, let's start at the top. Why not? Let's make sure things are named correctly so that it will make our life much easier. We're not going to call it Sphere, we're going to call it Dome Spire. Because that's much easier to remember. Uh, now I do have a plugin here that you can download, a free plugin if you're a Max user, to send stuff between Max and Substance Painter. So instead of me saving it out manually and loading up the uh, the project in Substance Painter, all I need to do is select the object and send it to Substance. It'll just ask me if I want to make any modifications to the FBX. I'll leave it at default, say OK. It's going to load up Substance Painter, bring in my model. Let me just make these large so we can see them a bit better. Okay, let's have a look here. What can we throw down? Now, again, I'm going to be texturing in both um, Substance Painter and Mari by the Foundry. Um, I probably won't take the Mari, I probably won't overpaint every single different asset in Mari, but I'll just take a selection of the ones that I think might benefit from a bit of an overpaint. So basically what we're doing with our Substance Painter here is we're using it for our base colour texture and then if it needs it we will overpaint it in Mari. Now the first thing I need to do of course is bake out my curvature and all that sort of thing. So I'm going to use the low poly mesh as the high poly mesh because I don't have a high poly. It is a high poly to begin with. Um, we're going to up this to 2K, 2048. And I think I'll leave everything else on the default and let's bake out all of our maps. It's been a while since I've been in Substance um, Painter, so... <laughs> Sniper Girl says, uh, where I got the idea for the heater? Well, let's have a look. Let me have a look. Where Sniper Girl got the idea for a heater. Oh, okay, I see. I see, I see, I see. Makes perfect sense now. I've actually never seen anything like this before. Is this some sort of um, homemade heating thing? I've never seen a heater hooked up to a propane tank like that before. Cool. Um, yeah, and I guess it makes perfect sense because, you know, if you're out in your backyard or something and you don't have a power point near you, you'll need some way to power up that heater. Propane is perfect. Sniper Girl says, same, never seen one as well. Looked cool. It does look cool. It does look really cool. Really cool. Pinterest, they've got so much, you know, I don't go to Pinterest very much. Because I've said to you guys before, I don't like um, if I want to look at something, they want me to open an account and log in. I think <laughs> it's the same with Facebook. If you if you read Facebook and you don't log into the into into a Facebook account, they're constantly um, popping up something on the screen saying log in, join Facebook. No, Mr. Zuckerberg, I'm not joining Facebook. No, no, never, never, never. Android Lost says, uh, I think that looks crazy. It does look crazy. It looks cool. It looks very cool. Yeah, but yeah, Pinterest, um, I don't go there very often because I don't want to open an account if I want to look at stuff. You should just let me be able to look at stuff. Smurfberry says uh, they're for data centers, but I'm going to pog anyway. Happy Girl says, don't use Pinterest. Everything you post is from Pinterest, though. <laughs> I thought you were living, are you constantly on Pinterest? <laughs> What's the second one that you posted to? Uh, Smurkery says, Intel is releasing a 56 core Xeon processor. Oh, me wanty, me wanty. Gimme, gimme, gimme. And how many thousands of dollars are Intel going to cost a charge for this um, 56 core Intel processor? How many tens of thousands of dollars? 
as we all know, Intel aren't, um, aren't shy of charging an arm and a leg for their stuff. And they're for data centers. Snappy Girl says, 56 core processor. I want to. Me too. I want. I want. Just think how quickly I could do my rendering and my video editing. Wow. It'll fly through. But they're going to charge so much money. And you know what Intel are like. And they do it because they can. Although less now with AMD coming out with the um, Ryzen thread rippers and stuff. They've really given them a run for their money when now when it comes to multi-core. Because uh, yeah, AMD have their their data center line of processors as well, which are called Ryzen is the consumer line. I can't remember what 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 AMD are calling their um, Epic. I think they call it their Epic line of processors. Not to be confused with Epic Games. I thought it was strange they chose to call it epic but anyway so yeah no, I'm sure it'll be it'll, it would be cool I would certainly like one of those uh, Intel processors but I'm not going to spend thousands and tens of thousands of dollars it's just not going to happen All right, now we've baked out the curvature map and all that sort of goodness. We can start looking at our textures to see what we want to throw down. Now this spire, I think, should be some sort of stone or cement. A sniper says the base price is 10 grand. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, Intel. Intel, Intel, Intel. Uh, Snappy Girl says, well, if I ever win the lottery, I'll be sure to buy one. Yeah, well, if I win the lottery, I'll buy 10. I'll set up a little render network farm of 10 of them. But uh, yeah, unless I win the lottery, that ain't going to be happening. I can hear my printer going off in the background. It does a clean every day. It cleans the print heads. It's so, so noisy. And uses ink, by the way, as well. Every time it cleans the print heads, you, I'm sure that's the printer manufacturer's way to get you to go through all your ink cartridges. Uh, Android Lust says, uh, base price of 10k, uh, her dreams crushed, that's right. That's why everybody was so happy when, uh, when AMD started releasing all their processors with multiple cores because up until then, multi-core processors were incredible, and still are, particularly from Intel, incredibly expensive. So, good on AMD for um for giving us multi-cores at reasonable prices. Uh, you, you guys know I upgraded my main machine. When did I do it? The end of last year, I think it was, or was it the beginning of this year? Anyway, a few months ago. And I did choose an Intel machine simply because a lot of the software I use for design runs better on Intel. I know that it should run the same on both, uh, but I found that it t tends to run better on Intel. Don't know why. It's like the NVIDIA and AMD thing. That's why I choose NVIDIA video cards because I use software that relies on CUDA and things, which is only available on NVIDIA. Um, so I did choose an Intel processor when I upgraded. But I do have an AMD machine as well. One of my random machines is an AMD, so. Okay. Oh uh, yes, we have to find um, a texture we can place down first. So let's look here. Let us look, let us look. I don't want gravel. We could make it some sort of, actually a metal. Metal might be more interesting than um, than stone. Let's see if there's a metal here that's interesting. We've got this metal rust that could look interesting. Let's uh, throw that down and see what it looks like. I'm 
not bad. I think it. I think tiling needs to be brought up a little bit. Scale. I think that's a bit better. Okay, that'll do good. That, that's okay for our base. Let's um, throw down something else though on top of it to make it look a bit more interesting. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? I want to avoid any more rust. There's enough rust in this material here. Nickel, ceramic, we've got the old iron, we've got the um, painted metal here which could be cool, another painted metal, and we're going to varnished wood, what else do we have there? We've got a few substances here we can look at. More rust. Rust out the yin yang. So many rust substances. Uh, again, if anyone's looking for more substances, you can get them from Algorithmic's website. There's a huge a heap of free ones you can download if you use Substance Painter. Trash steel is interesting. Uh, if I didn't use the one I've already got there, this trash steel could have been really good for a base color, but not for what I want now. Mood texture. I think it, I want to see if we can change the color of the paint. If we can change the color of the paint, we might look at this one. Again, let's work with our tiling here. I'm going to turn off the height information and the roughness and the, uh, and the normal for this up for this top coat, not for the bottom coat. Leg mog is leg mog here. <laughs> leg mog, it's good to see you, buddy. How are you? What you been up to? You have a good weekend? How's how's your dating going? How's the gym going? You're still going to the gym, I hope. It's good to see you, Legmo. I'm doing well though. Yep, no, everything's good here. Busy with work as usual. The studio stuff, I mean. Um, so, but apart from that, yeah, no, everything is good. I'm just seeing if I can change the colour here at all. I have a saturation value. Yeah, it looks like all I can do is desaturate the colour to make it like a white, which I which I would do if I'm going to use it. I can't actually see anything else here as far as changing the colour, which is disappointing. I didn't make the uh, substance though, so I guess I can't bitch too much. Legmunk says, good thanks. I was at a wedding on the weekend. Okay, one of those situations where I only knew the bride and no one else. Uh, so that was a, a tough test of the social skills. Had to go up to random strangers and introduce myself. Well, you're a streamer. You should be used to doing that. That's what I've actually noticed since I've been streaming. I'm a lot more outgoing than I used to be, if that makes any sense. I've always been a motor mouth anyway, um, you know. It's hard to shut me up at the best of times. Uh, but I have noticed since I've been a streamer that I've, I've become a lot more outgoing than I used to be. A lot a lot more loud, I guess the, the word would be. But uh, it's, it's always tough when you're at a function or a party and you don't know anyone. 
People don't bite though. Generally, everyone's very friendly. If you go up and say hello, they'll say hello back. Most people anyway. And if they don't, then the people at that party are assholes and uh, I wouldn't want to be there anyway. Uh, Legmark says, yes, when it comes to real life random socializing, I have this theory that people are secretly desperate to talk about absolute gibberish. Generally, they are. Any sort of social gathering, if you're a bit nervous about talking to someone you don't know, you should always bear in mind that most people feel the same way. Uh, so just keep that in your mind if you're hesitant to go up to somebody and start talking to them or a group of people and talk to them. Most people feel that way as well when they're at, when they're in a, in a social gathering. So it's not just you. Andrew Lust says, I used to hate social situations like that. Well, it, it, it's not fun. If you don't know the people, it, it, it's not fun. <laughs> um, but like I said, yeah, most people are pretty pretty cool. We do have these smart materials. I don't make enough use of the smart materials, actually, but because um, I like to create my own mixes. But it, it could be worthwhile for me to look through this a little bit more, I think. Uh, Legmark says, for example, one girl was all, ooh, I work at a cho for a chocolate company. Yum. Uh, so I started saying stuff like, oh, oh, yes, I used to work at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. <laughs> but I had to change careers after the factory got shut down for kids falling into the machines. And poor old Mr. Wonka got committed for an to an insane asylum. <laughs> And Legmog says she seemed to dig the ridiculous ridiculousness of it all. Well, I think that that's, that's a good... You sound like you're fine in a social situation. At least talking to girls, Legmog. You're so smooth. So smooth. I think that that sounds very cool. Uh, working for a chocolate factory, that'd be, that'd be cool. I'd like that. Although, you know, you guys know I love the chocolate, but I can't eat it because I break out in pimples. And I mean, I do. And generally, they want to hit my face. I don't know why, but the minute I start eating too much chocolate, it zits everywhere. At my age, of all things. Uh, Legmog says, but it wasn't until the evening that the big challenge came in. Oh, what was the big? Ch what was the big challenge? You didn't have to give a speech or anything at the wedding, did you? That is nerve-wracking. <laughs> Sniper Girl says, uh, I'd gain too much weight if I worked in a chocolate factory. I probably would too. Well, I would too. I used to be a real little butterball. I've said this, uh, I've mentioned this on stream before, but when I was younger, um, until about the age of 18, so between the age of, say, 12 and 18, I was a butterball and I was a round little ball. I was a uh, very heavy set kid. But I used to eat a lot of crap, so. <laughs> It comes from being uh, the oldest in the family and being spoiled by your parents, you see. Elegmog says, I wasn't staying at the hotel. I had driven the one hour journey to the venue and was driving back the same day, so I had to stay sober. Oh, that's no, that's no fun, staying sober. If you've got to stay sober because you've got to drive, if you're at a party, uh, which was interesting when the evening disco came around. <laughs> Every amply stocked up with Dutch courage on the dance floor. Whilst I'm also on the dance floor as sober as a judge. It's never nice, is it? You get to... When, when, when you're drunk and all your friends are drunk, you don't notice how, just how uh, embarrassing sometimes people can be when they're drunk. But when you're sober and everybody else is drunk, it's interesting to see just how, uh, how uncoordinated and funny people can be when they're drunk. It's no fun to go to a party and not drink. Although you guys know I don't really drink. Uh, special occasions I will, but aside from that, I don't. <laughs> not like my younger days. Oh, those, young, those, those wild younger days of mine. If you put it in front of me, I'd drink it, smoke it, eat it. Not anymore. Let's try the dust occlusion. I just want to see what... Um, what that gets us. Let us play with our values a little bit. 
Now I've got to remember the, how to do this. It's been so long. Um, Legmog says, "Well, thankfully, I have spent the last three years learning live uh, jive dancing. I'm not. I don't know what that is. What's jive dancing?" There was a big drunken circle with people entering the oh and entering the circle and doing some crazy drunken. <laughs> I suddenly got pushed into the middle, so I grabbed the um, bridge and did some jive routines. The bride, I can't read. The Philip, I grabbed the bride and did some jive routines. <laughs> what is jive? What is jive dancing? I've never heard of it. Explain. I'm intrigued. Now, again, I've, I've got to... No, where am I? I've got to try and um, remember <laughs> how I do my smart masks because it's been a while. Legmark says, uh, just dancing... Jive dancing is a partner dance. It's basically like 1950s style rock and roll routine. Oh, okay. Kind of like how they dance in Greece. And back to the future, lots of twirling and spinning. Okay, well, that sounds like fun. It's always fun to be twirling and spinning. That yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. Did the bride like it? I'm assuming she would. If she was, it's her wedding night, or her wedding day. She'd be in a good mood anyway. She probably wouldn't care. Uh, now what is going on here? I'm trying to, to watch chat and I'm trying to remember I have my workflow here for doing uh, my smart mask. The main lead, the man leads and the girl follows, uh, like Mog says, it's kind of like um, puppeteering from a man's point of view. Very hard for the man, very easy for the woman, probably why most women love it. Isn't that always the way? But it sounds like fun. Uh, yeah, I know, I know the type of dancing you're talking about now. Am I going completely blonde? How do I do this? I can't remember now. Just the attributes of who created it. Oh, it's because I'm selecting the wrong thing. <laughs> I get that. I got. I got there eventually. I did get there eventually. Right. Okay. Let us play around with our values. I'm just going to turn it up quite high so I can see what what it's going to be doing. I'll pull up on the contrast. Trilinear blending contrast, that's a mouthful. Grunge amount. We'll pull back a little bit on the grunge, I think. I just want... If I zoom in here, we can get a better look. Uh, you can see what it's doing here. It's just adding it to the interior here, but I'm going to invert that in a minute. In fact, I'm going to invert it right now. So there we go. Actually, I wonder if I should invert it back. Uh, Legmark says, so after that I ended up teaching jive to many of the women there. It's all, it, it always started with, uh, oh no, don't know what I'm doing, but they all quickly took to it. That's why you do it, isn't it, Legmark? It's not because you enjoy the dancing, it's just because you can get yourself surrounded by women. Oh, smooth. I'm onto your tricks. Uh, Sniper Girl says, uh, not going blonde, just grey. They say memory is the first to go. Oi! Oi! I'm looking at my, I can see my camera here in OBS and while there might be a few greys, I'm not going that grey, not yet anyway. Cheeky. <laughs> so cheeky. Why do I stream to be insulted by you people? Uh, let's play with our dirt level now that I've done an invert. So I've got to try and think here the best way to do this. 
metal, paint, when it starts to wear, where's it going to wear from first? It's going to wear, the last place to wear would generally be the, the, uh, the edges here. Legmog says, yes, my ultimate life uh, advice to anyone out there who kind of feels like they're not socially uh, gratified in life is join Jive dancing classes. I seriously wish I'd started it years ago. Well, there you go. I've, no, I've never tried it. I should give it a go myself one day. Um, I've done other sort of classes, like I've done boot scooting and all that sort of stuff. That was fun. Standing in a line, everybody doing the same thing. Let us play with our mix here a little bit. I'm just pulling up a bit on the grunge amount. All the grunge scale. Let's look at the edge masking. You can either pull in or pull out. I think I'm going to pull out a little bit. Sounds rude, doesn't it? Get your mind out of the gutter, people. Legmog says, in my experience, women love dancing. They certainly do. Um, I can confirm it very much endears the women to you at discos and weddings. I'm sure it does. Well, you, you're talking from experience. And you are correct. Women do love to dance. Men generally don't like dancing. Which is, you know, a shame and their loss. Women love arty people too. Like, they love artists. So if you're an animator or you're a designer or you do any sort of artwork, women love that too. Android Lust says most people including me. And Sniper Girl says don't dance. Well, here you go. You should. It's fun. Dancing is fun. Not coordinated enough? You can learn though. You can learn to be coordinated. And it can be a fun thing to do. I'm just going to go back to, to the texture for the actual paint here. And I'm just going to play with my luminosity a little bit. Just look at my contrast a little bit more. We can't change the saturation, which is really annoying. I would have liked to change the color of the paint, but that's okay. I think we turned off roughness, so that's not going to have any effect. Height range, I've turned that off as well, that's not going to have an effect. We do have these rust drops. So I might just pull up a little bit on that. Egg Legmog is telling Sniper Girl, with a good lead, you'll be spinning your socks off. That's right. Sniper Girl says, uh, I'd fall flat on my ass every 30 seconds. <laughs> Android Lust says, I like dancing my fingers across the keyboard. That's about it. <laughs> okay, let's, um, let's just go back to our materials here. I just want to see if there's anything else we can do to add to this. That might be cool and look good. Well, Leg Monk says, every girl I danced with at the wedding thought that, uh, thought that, and, and believe me, I'm not a natural dancer. I have two left feet myself. What I say is, as every woman, it's very easy anyway. As a woman, it's very easy anyway. <laughs> You're so smooth, Leg Monk. And your old silver tongue there. Well, that's how you do it. If you want to get in good with the ladies, you've got to be smooth. They can see through bullshit a mile away. I'm just looking to see if there's a substance here that I might want to add. Uh, 
I should we should play around with um substance alchemist on stream one day as well because that's new and it's cool and I haven't really played with it much. I didn't generally get a chance to play with it because I'm doing stuff with the studio and we don't use it. Um, but during my time with you guys on Twitch, it might be an interesting thing for us to, to play with on stream live. Because it is cool. We can make some interesting new substances with it. Mixes of substances. Sniper Girl says, and Nightbot spamming again. Yeah, I know. It's spying on me. I'm telling you. It's watching me, listening to me, and spying on me, that bot. The fact that, it, yeah, it's, it's just, it's freaking me out. That bot is freaking me out. As you guys know, I won't have any of those home things like uh, the Google Home Automation thing or the Amazon Echo or the Amazon Dot or any, because I'm paranoid about it listening to me. It just creeps me out. Creeps me out. Uh, Legmog says, but yes, everyone's homework for this week is to do a Google search for local modern jive, Laroque classes happening near you. Modern jive, Laroque are basically the same thing. Okay. There you go. You've been given your homework, boys and girls. Sniper Girl says, a simplified version of this could look cool on the van. Let me have a look. I really wish I, I use Streamlabs chatbot, and it's good. I like it. Don't get me wrong, um, but I wish um, it had an easier way to copy links. You basically got to highlight it. There is no way, that, easy way to copy a link, unlike Discord, where you can just right click and go copy link. That's cool. Who model? Who modeled that? Nicely modeled. Uh, so Sniper Girl says a simplified version of this could look cool on the van. Uh, it, it look again. It, it could look cool, but it could look a bit busy now because the van's got a lot going on. Um, but if you want to model it up, because that's what because it, you think it'll be fun, then do it. Uh, I'm assuming this is someone's 3D model by the look of it. It's a nicely model. Whoever did it. Snappy girl says same here. To be honest, uh, and the fact that they can be hacked is dangerous. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Yeah, no, those things are staying away out of my home. They're not coming into my home. I mean, if I want the lights, to, if I want to turn the lights on, I'll get up and turn the lights on. I don't need a smart box sitting there listening to me so I can say, turn the lights on, Amazon. Alexa. Because Amazon, I'm an, I'm an Amazon Prime member and they did a um, promotion not that long ago where they actually were going to give you a free Amazon Dot. Uh, and I didn't take that offer up either because I just don't want the thing in my home. Uh, because they data mine you as well, of course. So keep that in mind if you do put one in your house, whether it's Google or Amazon or Apple or any of them, they're data mining you. Big money in your data. This includes me too. Oh, like, oh well, I don't know when I'm going to get time leg mod, but I'll try as far as the, um, the drive dancing goes. Sniper Girl says, uh, was the person that modelled it, this was the person that modelled it. Let's have a look at their art station. I'm always, always, I like looking at all you guys and girls art station, even if this person is not in my, in my stream. Um, I'm still interested in looking at anyone's art station. Okay, and this is Audrey Lidvichenko. Andrew. I'm, I beg your pardon, Andrew Lidvinchenko. Nicely textured. Nice. Interesting, actually, the way he's used a green here for his background. I've not seen that done before, actually. You know, most people use black, grey, or a mixture of between those. Uh, he's chosen to use green, which is... Interesting. Oh, makes the model stand out. Reminds me of a green screen though, because I'm mean, from being a Twitch streamer and having a green screen behind me. Anytime I see a green background like that, I always automatically think green screen. Nice, he's done nice modeling work there. Uh, 
I'm just seeing if he's got anything. Oh, is he? He's one of these people that likes to do guns, obviously. <laughs> That's enough of that. I've seen enough guns. Yeah, I think it'll be too much, Sniper Girls. Mercury says, bra, seriously, it's not too much. <laughs> too much clutter. Yeah, seriously, no, it's too much. Yeah, I think I think it would be too much as well. You're going to start to make it look too heavy. The model's going to start to look too heavy. You people are going to, will look at it and they're not going to see the all the detailing you put into the other things because they're just going to look at a a model that's starting to look a bit too too heavy. I feel. I mean, I could be wrong, but I would I, I would say that it'd be too heavy. Leg Mug says the only thing you need is a smart box. The only thing you need a smart box for is to remind you to go to your drive charging class. You don't even need that if you if you use Windows and Windows 10, you can set up an agenda here inside your calendar, and that will remind you to go to your Jive Dance class. And you don't have to spend a cent for it; it's already built into Windows. Sniper Girl says mostly worried about people listening, hacking them. Yeah, I am too, but also the data mining. I don't like being data mined. That's why I don't have Facebook. Uh, there was a case of a baby monitoring camera that had the ability to speak through it and a person hacked it and was cursing at the toddler. I did read an article about that, yeah. I know, there are all these horrible things that can happen if you're not really careful. I mean, there are websites where people have these cameras, not just baby cameras, but normal IP cameras that they put in their home uh, who don't realise that it's being broadcast. So there are websites online where you can go to to spy on people who have these cameras in their house that don't know that they're being broadcast live to the net because they don't change things like the default passwords on the on the uh, login and all that sort of thing. Or there's just a security issue in the software. So, yep, there are sites like that on the net where if, you, if, you're, if you're creepy, if you're one of those creepy people who likes to spy on people and that don't know it, you can actually watch people through their video cameras. Creepy. Weird. Creepy. You. That's another reason I don't have one. Uh, but that that's cameras more than the uh, Alexa or those smart hub things. But yeah, I don't want to be data mine. That's my main reason. Uh, Legmog says, you'd think that a master hacker who can literally bypass the security of these devices has better things to do than to verbally troll a toddler. That's the problem. It's not that you don't even have to be a master hacker to get into them. It's that they're insecure from the get-go. As soon as they're Manufactured. It's the manufacturer's fault. They're not securing the software. So you don't have to be a master hacker. Any you know, any 12-year-old could do it. That's the problem. And they don't disclose the, these vulnerabilities, these companies that sell this hardware either. So that's another problem. Smurfery says, too much useless, too much unless you inten intentionally want to go for Katamari don't... don't that's a sheer, uh, accumulating absurd things with magic gravity waves. Okay. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm looking for another uh, substance here, aren't I? Um, 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 um. Now, I want something that's going to be interesting. If I add a third substance, I want it to be interesting. No, we don't want tiles. We don't want stone. We don't want any more steel. We don't want rock or pewter. Maybe a mud. A mud could look interesting. We've got these two mud muds here. Um, Sniper Girl says to Smurfberry, I have a plow on the roof on the front. The problem weights about a thousand pounds, well beyond needing magic magical gravity. 
Legmog says, but yes, the ultimate moral of Legmog's story is go learn jive dancing. Uh, I'm not a dancer. It's not It's not an excuse. You'll thank yourself for it when you're sober at a wedding and uh, gaining seriously brownie points with the women. <laughs> Have you still been going to the gym, Legmog, or is that slacking off? Because it's only going to do good if you keep doing it. The gym, that is. Or dance practice as well, I'm assuming. But um, I know it can be hard to stay motivated to go to the gym. Just looking through here to see if there's anything else that might be okay. And if not, we'll go back to the mud. Yeah, we might go back to the mud. Uh, let's try this mud here. Let's play with our scaling. Uh, let's turn off the height information. Let's go back to our smart materials, smart masks, I mean to say. Thank you for the follow. I'm sorry I can't pronounce your name. Um, but thank you for following Phil Does 3D. I do appreciate it. I wonder why my follows aren't coming up in Streamlabs chat box. Some, something, something weird going on there. Normally um, I see my followers in the chat bot here and I think they, it's set up to actually post in chat when it happens, but it doesn't seem to be doing it. Legmog says, oh, I come down with a massive cold infection thingy for the past two weeks, so I've not. I'll be starting again this week, though. Good to hear. Yeah, I've just got an overhead cold, so I know what you, where, where you're coming from as far as being a bit ill. You don't want to go to the gym when you're ill. Uh, do remember to join the Discord server as well if you want. The Phil Does 3D Discord server if you're new to my channel. You can find a link in the panels below my stream if you're watching this back on a Friday or Saturday. Um, the blue graphic that says join the Discord server, if you click that, you can get an invite link to join the server that way. Sniper Girl says to Legmog dealing with the same. Yeah, Sniper Girl's not too well. Legmog says, I swear the disinfection has gone global. Uh, Phil, didn't you yourself have a big cough last week? A big part of my infection was a man. Yeah, I did. It, it was. I had like a head cold, so I had a raspy sore throat. Uh, I didn't have a runny nose or anything, but I had a bit of a cough as well. Yep. And the cough is almost gone. It's still there just a little bit, but it took a good two weeks to get rid of it. But that was because I came from that really hot weather to the really cold weather in Melbourne. But I think there is a bug going around at the moment. Like, I think there's some... Isn't swine flu or something on, happening in India at the moment? There's a big outbreak of swine flu or bird flu, one of the two. Not that I had swine or bird flu, but I'm saying there is an outbreak and it's that time of the year with the change of the seasons where people get sick. Sniper Girl says, yeah, he did. Legmog says, yep, I think we had the same thing. Uh, it lasted for ages. I had to start having more smoothies. Yeah, I know. I know. It, just, it did. It took a long time for me to get rid of it. Uh, let's throw down. Let's throw down. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's throw down decisions, decisions. I hate making decisions. Um, let's try this surface one one. Now what's happened here is, because it's using two, the first one is being overwritten by the second one, so what we need to do, I need to change the pass-through mode, but before I do that, because I want to see what it's doing more easily, I'm going to leave the pass-through to normal. While I play with the value here a little bit.
play with that contrast a little bit. And blend down on the texture just a touch. Pull up on the ambient occlusion a touch. I'm going to pull back a bit on the curvature. Position gradient starts at the top and works toward the bottom, so you'll notice it's, it affects the top more than the bottom. So I'm just going to pull up a bit on that because I want that ball at the top there to be a little, have a little bit more of the color to it. And the thickness. Mm, so we we'll might pull up on the thickness just a little bit. Uh, Legmog says, but yes, here's another hot Legmog tip for mild-mannered flirtation in real life. After a successful dance, a bit of banter, go to leave, but before you do, hold your hands out and say high five. Uh, and just as the lady is about to smack your hands, pull them away and say, no, don't you do it then leave. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to, that, that's really going to be beneficial, Legmog. They're really going to appreciate that. One way to ingratiate yourself with the ladies, not. That one's for free. Don't listen to him. They, they, he's not being serious. If you do that, then they're likely to slap you more than anything else. These la the ladies will slap you. They certainly will remember it for years, and they'll remember what, what a jerk you were for doing it for years as well. Um, I'm just going to play with my values here a little bit and see if we can get anything more interesting. I quite like the multiply. I don't like the divide. No, I like the multiply, I think, probably the most. We can turn it off and on to see well, how it's affecting the model as well. But I think the multiply is better. Um, I'm just going to go back to our base metal color here. I'm just going to change the roughness because I just feel like it might be a little bit too shiny. So I'm just going to pull down on the roughness a little bit. I mean, I want a little bit of a shine because that is metal, and but um, I just don't want too much of a shine happening. Legmark says there's deep psychology to this. Uh, they usually the usual strategy of especially shy people to uh, to ingratiate themselves is to be super super agreeable. Uh, this is a light-hearted, jokey way of setting one's self apart from the troop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess. <laughs> I personally don't believe that you should be super super. I, I think you should just be yourself. It, look, it's not hard, guys and girls. If you're in a social situation and you want to be well-liked, hopefully you're a nice person and just be yourself. 
people can see through bullshit. People can see through, you know, lies. Just be yourself and you'll be fine. Be your charming self. Not don't don't worry about it so much. If you try and be someone you're not, people can pick up on it. It's like with streamers, and I've said this to you guys too before on stream. Um, you know, streamers have put on one of their personas. That's all well and good, and if people like Doctor Disrespect or whatever his name is, I never, I've never watched him. Uh, if they want to put on those sort of personas, and more power to them. It's exhausting. I don't know how they can keep it up for as long as they do. Um, and I don't want to. I don't want to watch somebody that's that's faking it, personally. Or, I don't, or and the same goes if I'm talking to someone or having in a group. I, I don't want to be talking to someone that's fake. I've got no time for fake. No time. You be fake if you want to be, but uh, I've got no time for you or for it. Legmug says, I've never heard of Dr. Disrespect. I'm assuming this is some sort of top dog streamer. Yeah, he's one of the most popular streamers on Twitch. I'm not sure what his numbers are, but they're huge. He's, he's like the PewDiePie of Twitch. One of them, anyway. There are, there are two or three large streamers. I think Ninja is another streamer on Twitch. He's very big as well. I think he plays Fortnite. Um, and Do Dr. Disrespect puts on a wig, puts on glasses. I think he even puts on a fake moustache, or that could be real. I think he's one of those really loud streamers that screams, you know? Who I don't, I, I, I hate loud streamers. And I've never watched him though, so I'm only guessing. Uh, Android Lust says, yeah, he is. I never watched his stream, but he's playing, he plays a character and yeah, he does. Uh, he admits to that too. I don't think he tries to pretend he's not playing a character. And, and his character is, you know, is what draws people to him, I guess, on Twitch who like to watch that sort of thing. There's something for everyone on Twitch. I guess that's why Twitch is so popular. Uh, Legmark says PewDiePie of Twitch. Yeah, that makes that makes a note to never watch this person. They have the, <laughs> I'm the same. I, I don't watch PewDiePie on YouTube. And I, actually, I think PewDiePie is on Twitch as well. Man. Um, Android Lost says his username makes me not want to watch him. Yeah, well, I'm not going to bag streamers. I have never watched Doctor Disrespect. I've never watched Ninja. Um, they are very popular streamers, so I guess they appeal to some to to, to a large group of people. Uh, but I don't like watching streamers that scream. Uh, and, now, and I don't know whether these two guys do or not. I think Doctor Disrespect might. Um, yeah, I like a chill stream. I don't like watching a stream who where the where the guy is screaming all the time. That puts me off. I have enough drama and screaming in my life as it is. I don't want any more. No, that's not true. I don't surround myself with drama or screaming. Uh, Legmunk says, I honestly cannot see the point of being in streams where the chat, yeah, and the chat just blasts by at a supersonic speed with thousands of viewers. Yeah, I've, I've, I've noticed, yeah, I can't understand how people can chat in a really popular streamer's chat because it does, it goes by really quickly. I mean, as the streamer, you've got no chance of even reading it because most, because the stream is constantly, the chat stream is constantly going. Mm. Uh, they, 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 the smaller streamers are good too because we our chat is, is slower so we, we can respond to everyone and make every, and welcome everyone bigger streamers can't do that because there are so many people in the stream which is fine I mean the, the, these guys I think that's them their bread and butter they've made twitch their career so they want more people to watch them that's what it's all about for them it's it's all about numbers getting more people to watch them more people to subscribe to get bits, all that sort of stuff. Because that's how they earn their living. Uh, Legmunk says, the only big Twitch streamer who I'll even give any time to is a guy called Destiny. Uh, I I haven't watched Destiny. The only big, big-ish streamer that I will watch is uh, Dan's Gaming. Because I like Dan. Dan is more quiet, more relaxed sort of guy as a streamer. He's the sort of streamer I like to watch. I haven't watched him very much recently, but... Um, I like to watch his horror month stuff. When he does his horror marathon, it's always cool. 
Yeah, he's a variety streamer. Uh, Legmog says, and even then I only watch him on YouTube. Smurpery says, uh, TWF only watching big name streams instead of big art streams. <laughs> I think I think we've probably had enough, done enough for this spire. I don't think it needs any other coats of anything else. We don't want to overdo it. So let's export the texture. Um, 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 um. Let me just, let me just change the texture size to 2K. It's it, that, that export plugin I showed you from Max to Substance Paint that creates a folder for every asset as well. So I'm just going to hit the export button. I'm going to open the folder so we can see what it's exported. It's done our normal maps, that's all good. We can, uh, metallic ambient occlusion. Um, I'm going to save this, so if we need to come back to it, we can. Actually, I don't think it'll, because it's a plugin, it automatically saves it, I believe, into that folder as well. I'm just going to double check that before I close out of Substance Painter. I'm sending it to my temp folder here at the moment, and it's the Dome Spire. Yeah, and it does. It saves out the substance file if you need to go back and change anything. Just going to keep that folder open. And now we can close down substance. And as I texture these pieces up, I'm going to start applying the texture so we know which pieces are done now. So I'll start replacing the white material with the actual texture that we created inside of Substance Painter. So, first things first, let's find a nice clean spot here. Uh, now, <laughs> there is a plugin that Algorithmic provide for Substance, so you can bring your substances into Max. The problem is, because I'm using Max 2020, they haven't released the updated plugin yet. So I can't set up my Substance correctly in Max 2020 until they release that plugin. So, for this project, um, I'm just going to have to use a standard shader. Uh, if they release the plugin before we finish the project, then I'll, I'll swap the shaders out. But for this, just so we can see what's textured and what's not, I'm just going to be using the standard shader. It's the same with Gauze with ZBrush. They haven't released an updated version of Gauze that works with Max 2020 yet either. So if you want to, if, I, if you need to do any work and you're working in Max 2020 with Gauze or with ZBrush, you're going to have to save out and import your meshes that way. So I'm only going to be taking the color texture because I just wanted to show me what has been textured and what hasn't. As we start working through our model. So I'm just going to turn those on and assign that material to the spire. Uh, so it's not going to look correct because, like I said, it's not showing the metallic or the roughness or all that sort of stuff. But at least we know it's textured up because we can see it. Okay, let's keep moving along. Uh, we're going to call this one... Uh, I'll call this one... What was this one called? Dome Spire. So we'll call this one... Spirebase 1. Spirebase SN for small. Okay, let us send that to Substance Painter. Uh, Legmark says, I actually like Destiny because a lot of his content is less about gaming and more debate-oriented. Debates tons of political, philosophical issues, which are fascinating. Yeah, I, I know you noticed you guys, uh, even though I, I'm on Twitch to do 3D, to show you guys doing me doing 3D, to encourage you guys to do 3D. Uh, I know a lot of you have said that you like it when we have conversations about stuff. Which is fine, which is cool. I enjoy com having conversations with you guys as well. Which is why I don't mind if I don't, you know, if it takes me longer to make my model because 
I'm more interested in chatting with you people in chat than working because I that's what I enjoy about Twitch is chatting to you. So he sounds like he could be cool. I actually have heard of the Destiny before. I've heard that name. I, I haven't watched, but I have heard the name. Okay, this, this, this one, this one, this one. Let's make this one stone. So let's start with a stone. Andrew Loss says, uh, I was just about to say, the more we chat, the less we work we do. I know. <laughs> yeah, oh, look, I know. I know when, I, when I'm when i chatting, and it might it might frustrate some people that are new to my channel, channel who are watching and thinking, is this guy ever going to do real 3D stuff or is this going to talk to chat all the time? Um, I, so I know it can be frustrating for people who want to see me do 3D, but it's an important part of Twitch is the chat. An important part of... Uh, Streaming, being a streamer, is talking to that to to my chat. So, um, so yeah, I don't know what to say to you people who I'm not one of those streamers who ignores their chat, just does their work, and doesn't talk. It's just not in my bones, in my DNA. Like I said, I'm I'm a motor mouth, a chatterbox. I I couldn't do it if I tried. I have to chat. I have to talk. It was funny, when I first started streaming, um, I used to have no viewers because, you know, as a new streamer, no one knows who you are. Uh, and I get people popping into chat, and, and, but I'd still talk. I'd talk constantly. So people would pop into chat saying, you know, no one's watching you. Why, why are you talking? Who are you talking to? That's okay. They were just trolls, which you get on Twitch. So just, yeah, if anyone does want to stream on Twitch, don't be disheartened if you don't get viewers because it does take a while. People don't, aren't going to find you immediately as soon as you start streaming as much as you think they might or as much as you want them to. It just, it takes a while. Uh, where's a stone that I like? I don't think I want a concrete even though this is the base color, we're going to be putting something else over the top of it. I'll use a concrete if I can't find a stone that I like. Uh, uh, Legmunk says, yeah, I seldom watch TV or movies these days. YouTube is my main source of viewing. Uh, and like going down the YouTube rabbit hole, I know you can still eat it. You can start intend to watch like a quick video on YouTube and before you know it, you've been there for like three hours. Because they keep recommending really interesting stuff. That's how they keep you there. Like recommended for you. Oh, that looks interesting. I'll just check that out. Oh, I found my political compass was uh, swinging way towards the hard right. <laughs> um, Destiny almost... Destiny single-handedly swung me right back to the opposite direction. Well, you can have any political views you want. You want to be hard right, you want to be hard left, you want to be centrist, whatever. That's your right as an adult in this demo democracy we live in. Uh, but I like to think that I have more of a social conscience, so I'm probably more of a lefty than anything. Sniper Girl says, I think that if I streamed, that I'd get viewers somewhat fast. Ooh, why? What makes you say that, Sniper Girl? Do you know a lot of people on Twitch, maybe? Or are you just assuming? I've seen the best play laid plans uh, fall apart of people who think that they can just jump on Twitch and they'll get viewers immediately. Concrete Dusty could be cool. Uh, Android Lust says, I generally listen to stories and podcasts on YouTube so I don't have to stop 3D to watch. Which is another great thing about Twitch. You can have my stream up and you can be working away and you can listen to me. And because I never shut up, there's a constant droning on the background for you. And I play music, but you can never hear the music because I never shut up. And of course, you've got to like um, it, it, electronic dance music if you, to listen to my stuff anyway. Because that's all, generally all I play. Uh, Snappy Girl says, yeah, I know a lot of people and have had several people ask if I stream. Well, it always helps if you do know a lot of people, that's for sure. 
And that's, uh, again, for anyone new that wants to be streaming on Twitch, they recommend you pop into other people's streams, become friends with other streamers. Uh, that, that helps you grow too. Helps your channel to grow. And Snoopy says, just make weird noises, you'll get viewers. Just go into um, IRL and whisper into the microphone. That seems to be very popular. I forget what the what they call it, ASMR or a a a ASM or... Oh. <laughs> They've got some term acronym for it where people that whisper into micro into the microphone. I find it weird. Do you guys want me to talk to you like this all the time? I think it's weird. Freaky weird. Uh, Snappy Girl says I mod for art streams. Oh, that that would help. <laughs> yeah, th those people that whisper into the microphone, or or they get they get things and they make noises with them like cellophane or, uh, or or they'll rub the microphone it's just weird it's all just weird stuff people are into some weird stuff I'm not judging hey listen you, you, you be into whatever weird stuff you guys want but wow I don't get it I just don't get it um one of these concretes here was interesting. Which one was it? No, not that one. That is an interesting concrete, but I don't want lines around it, so... The same with this one. Again, an interesting concrete, but not what I want. Uh, let's try this one as a base color. Let's just play with our scaling maybe a little bit. See, it has these chunks in it, which I don't like. Is there an option for me to remove those, I'm hoping? Impacts. Yeah, I want to get rid of the impacts. Because I, I don't like these impacts in it. Uh, Snappy Girl says, if you whispered like that all the time, I'd unsub in a second. <laughs> Legmog says, yes, I'm well into ASMR. I started knowing about it years ago, before it was even called ASMR. Back then it was simply called Whisper Blogs. I always found the ASMR name kind of fancy smancy. But yes, I can fully see how people find it weird. I have seen some very strange ASMR videos. Will Twitch have a section devoted to it? In the uh, IRL section, the In Real Life stuff channel. So, yeah. Check the dirtiness. Let's pull up on, on the dirtiness a bit. And the weathering. Hmm. How, how weathered do I want to make this? How old do I want to make this terrace? Maybe a little bit of weathering so we can see a little bit in the inside there because if people went under the dome and looked up, we'd see that, so that could look cool. Uh, Android Lost says, ASMR reminds me of when I had a dog and she would tear shit up in another room quietly. <laughs> yeah, they do it quietly because they think, you know, they, they don't want you to know that what, they, what they're up to. Legmonk says, uh, one girl I followed on Twitch had so such a relaxing voice. I was all, you should get into ASMR, and she literally did. <laughs> and Sniper Girl says, I find ASMR creepy as hell. I do too. I find it incredibly creepy. And I, I, I just don't get it. I don't get why you want to listen to people's whisper. And it's, it is usually girls, though, I have to admit. It's usually girls that do it. Um, but I find it, I find it bizarre, strange. I don't get it. I don't want to listen to it. But there's a whole section on Twitch if you are into that sort of thing and you do want to listen to it. How about it? Like I said, there's something for everyone on Twitch. 
Uh, let's find another texture we can put over the top of this one now. There must be something cool. What's this grunge map? Okay. No, I don't want metal. I don't want steel. I don't want marble. Uh, we might add another mud layer, but I want to do that as the third layer, so I just want something else. Uh, Legmark says, for me, I think it started in real life. I was in a very quiet museum once, and some old lady was all, would you mind not doing a questionnaire for me? And she was asking me questions, but her voice was so damn soft, I was literally fighting to not fall asleep to hear her. I have heard people say that they like to watch the Twitch ASMR people at bedtime because it helps them sleep, helps them fall asleep. I don't have a problem falling asleep. I'm out like that. As soon as I put my head on the pillow, I'm gone most times, unless I'm thinking about something and my mind is racing. Generally, because I'm so tired anyway, once I hit the bed, I'm asleep. But yeah, I have heard people say that, um, that they use it to help them fall asleep. This painted plaster could be interesting. Uh, we have these two colors here. Uh, this one has lines through it, which looks like they both, both might have lines through it. Let's try, let's try the painted plaster and if it, uh, if we can't use it, we can remove it. I'm just looking for these lines that it has in it. And wondering if I can turn them off. Doesn't look like I can turn them off, which is which is unfortunate. Let's see if we can hide them with the scaling. No, I don't, I don't want lines running through it like that. It's not going to work for me. Not going to work for me. And this one has lines through it too, so let's keep looking. We don't want pebble. We don't want pewter. We do have a plaster and a plaster wall. Let's look at the... Let's look at the plaster wall. Again, let's pull up on the tiling. I'm going to turn off the height, the normal and the roughness. Hambone, good to see you Hambone, how are you? I'm well, I hope you're well too. And it's good to see you Hambone. Uh, Legmog says, I assume the cylinder is going to be some sort of privy. Uh, Andrew Doss says, hi to Hambone. Uh, let's throw a smart mask. Actually, let me just see what parameters I can change here for this uh, plaster. Pardon me. I haven't even eaten yet and I'm already burping. It's going to pull down a little bit on the luminosity. Maybe pull up a bit on the contrast. Hue shift won't really do anything. Saturation. We don't want purple plaster. I'm going to pull back on the saturation. Uh, we don't have normal eruptness. I've turned those off. Okay, let's look for a smart mask. And I think I'm just going to pull up on this a little bit so I can see what my masks are called a little bit more easily. Uh, Legmog says, yeah, Ruby, aka, I thought that's what you meant. I, we don't call it that here. Um, there must be an English thing. But I thought that's what it was. Uh, for the bathroom facilities, it can go next to the kitchen. That's right. <laughs> 
Oh, these kitchen, bathroom, bedroom jokes. We will get there. They, we, will, we will be making a kitchen, a bathroom, and a bedroom. Uh, Hambone says, any advice for beginner 3D artists to become better at artistic aspects of 3D outside of the technical? So you want advice to become a better artist, basically. Um, any Anything to do with art will benefit your 3D. So color theory, you know, all, all the, all that sort of thing. Anything will, uh, will always benefit you when it comes to any sort of art, three D artwork, two D artwork. Uh, so yeah, my my advice to you would be to, um, well, as far as being a good three D artist. Being observant is really important. So, uh, actually, one, someone posted in the Discord server in the general chat, you know, what, what a normal person sees walking down the street, what a 3D artist sees walking down the street. That's incredibly apt, and it was very, very good. Um, so you should be observant and notice things in the real world because that will help you then recreate them in the 3D world. So being observant is good. Knowing color theory is good. Um... No, uh, Hambone says, besides smoking tons of wood, we, yeah, okay, I get where you're coming from. Smurfery says, I feel that improving your observational skills is probably the best thing you're looking for. Yeah, Smurfery is correct. So, yeah, ob ob being observant is really important because you need to be able, you need to be observant to be able to recreate that sort of stuff in 3D. If you're not, if you don't, if you're not observant, you don't notice it, you're not going to be able to recreate it. Uh, but it's just general art stuff is going to be really helpful to do 3D work as well, like colour theory. You know, all of the general arty sort of things that, that artists do help you when it comes to 3D. So if you're a good artist before you start doing 3D, you're going to be a good 3D person anyway because you have that background. You've learnt those skills by being an artist and you can take that into a 3D program. And again, it comes down to composition, layout, colour, all that sort of thing. Andrew Doss says, best advice, work at it daily. Your practice makes perfect. It does, um, even just a little bit. And the handbone says, just do it really. That's that's pretty much it, handbone. Just be observant and do it. <laughs> uh, handbone says, Every, ever have an any issue with staying motivated to sit down and work? Well, yeah, no, I've had times where I'd, I've been demotivated when I didn't want to work. Um, I generally don't because I like what I do, but... There have been times where I just haven't felt like it or wanted to do something different. Um, and if that's the way you feel, then don't push it because you're not going to do good work anyway. But don't get into don't, don't use it as an excuse never to do anything either. You don't want to be like constantly procrastinating and not doing anything. But if you're not really feeling it, then don't push yourself because you're not going to enjoy it. Thought I'd uh, da, 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 da. Best of all, don't they? Uh, Andrew Loss says, though I try to take a 24 hour break after finishing something, but that doesn't always work. Hambone says, I definitely only have a tech background. That doesn't matter. A tech back it does not matter whether you've just got a technical background or you've got no background experience in anything. It does not matter. The more you practice, the better you'll get. Um, and, it, and just because you've got a technical background doesn't mean you can't be a good artist. I mean, I know we joke about programmer art all the time. Generally, programmers are left brain and artists are right brain or the other way around. I can never remember. But there's nothing to say you can't be good at both. And there's nothing to say by practicing, you won't get better. So. Uh, Handbone says 3D is all is new all around and art. Legmog says, yes, Hambone, my main advice would be understanding that art is inherently abstract, false, a kind of illusion. I personally say don't get too caught up in a philosophy of must absolutely emulate the real world as close as I can, conceivably can. Embrace the freedom of the abstract. Well, and again, that's the other beauty of being in, doing artwork. You can make whatever you want. If you want it to be real, you make it real. If you don't want it to be real, you don't make it real. 
you want to do cartoon stuff, you do cartoon stuff. If you want to do guns, you do guns. If you want to do cars, you do cars. You do whatever you want. And it's fun. And you'll get better the more you practice at it. The bit leg mug is correct. Um, being observant, though, is still going to help be helpful, even if you're not making real world stuff. And by being observant, I mean the way light hits an object, the way, you know, all, all these little details. Andrew Loss says, I don't have motivation issues. Sometimes I don't feel, I don't feel some personal project that I start, but I will just start something else. Well, and then you can come back to it at a later date or you can leave it if that's the case. That's true. Montresieur, it's good to see you, Montresieur. How are you? I hope you've been well. How's things? How's things in Canada? Montresieur says, uh, glad to see your channel going and your viewership up. Checked out your recent stuff and it's fantastic, man. Thank you, Montresieur. Uh, yeah, well, I've been streaming for a while now. I'd be disappointed if I had no viewers again. <laughs> Although I'm thankful for every single one of you that do watch and uh, follow me. So, But it's good to see you, Montresieur. Uh, Hambone says, sorry for interrupting your flats. Okay, that's no problem. That's why I'm here. I'm, I want to chat to you guys. Android Lust says, actually, the hand bone, there has been times when I wasn't motivated, come to think of it, but uh, I follow a lot of 3D art and 2D artists and Instagram and ArtStation. Looking at this stuff would get my butt in gear. Well, that can be a good motivational thing too, although it can be depressing too, because there's so many really talented people on ArtStation. Some of the work is amazing. Uh, Montresieur says, life's been wild, wild good, wild bad. Hambone says to Android Dusk, good deal. Montresio says, I'm doing VR applications development. That'd be cool. Uh, and Montresio says, still doing 3D art con contracts a ton. But a lot of my work has been in VR applications, which is where I wanted to head. Well, that's good. If that's what you want to do. Sounds cool. Working in VR would be cool. Making VR stuff. And augmented reality stuff. I think that'd be cool too. And you're still doing art contracts, so that's good. Sounds cool. Uh, and sounds great. I always like to hear when people are happy, not when people are sad. I mean, I know it's hard not to, everyone gets sad, but you know, or has problems in their life, but I'm glad it's all going well, Montresio. Uh, Handbone says, yeah, there is some amazing stuff on Art Station. There certainly is like crazy good. I know there is. Some people are so incredibly talented. Uh, and that can get a bit depressing sometimes, at least uh, a little bit, you know. You look at other people's work and you think, I'm never going to get that good. You will. It just takes practice. Some people are just born good, if you know what I mean. Some people just take to it, take to doing 3D stuff like a duck to water. Other people, it just takes a bit more time and a bit more practice. And you have to remember too, some of those people's art stations, some of those people have been in the industry for decades. So they've got decades of experience behind them. They've been doing it for a very long time. And I'm looking for a good mask. Let's try this one. Let us play with our mask value a little bit. I'm going to pull back. I just want to pull in a little bit of the cement, the underlying cement. No, I won't pull up on the blur. I'll pull up a bit on the contrast. Ambient occlusion, no. Curvature. Yeah, let's just pull up on the curvature a little bit. Uh, 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 world space normal, no. Position gradient, no, not so much. And thickness. Pull up a little bit on the thickness. Let's look for another material we can put over the top of this one. Um, 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 let me catch up with chat. 
Montrose here says, had my ups and downs since last we spoke, but that's just part of the journey. Maximize both. Well, that sounds like a good philosophy, Montrose here. Legmog says, I honestly think uh, AR is absolutely the future. I do too. Uh, I'm calling it. In the future, human society will revolve. Sorry, I'm just, my, my, my firewall is leaping at me. Uh, we'll, we'll revolve around augmented reality. Virtual reality is but a passing niche fad. Oh, I, don't, I wouldn't call it just a fad, but um, certainly I think augmented reality is probably easier for people to grant, to, 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 to use than VR. VR can make people sick. It makes me sick. Uh, when I put on a pair of VR glasses and I play a game, I get ill. I feel physically sick. Um, that's getting better. The high refresh rate screens reduce that sort of thing now, but but augmented reality is really useful and really interesting. Uh, so I think augmented reality will take off with the general public more quickly than VR has. Um, Nagmok says the thing. Sorry, Montresor says the thing about Art Station is you just have to realize the time those people put into it. The in, uh, intentionally put into it, yeah. Uh, and if you de 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 dedicate the same time while being honest with yourself about your work and what needs to get better, it just takes a critical eye of the reality of what you are trying to create. And Montresor says, well, does it look like your reference? No, why not? Yep, that's great advice as well for Montresor. <laughs> I'm trying to pronounce your name. Is it Chag? Chaguina? I'll call you Chag. Hi, Chag. It's good to see you. <laughs> My apologies if I'm m mangling your username. The guys and girls in chat will tell you how bad I am. But Chag, it's good to see. Just Chag. Chag it is then. And good to see you, Chag. And thank you for the follow as well. Uh, <laughs> the person that followed. <laughs> Again, I'm not getting my notifications coming through Streamlabs for some reason. Are the notifications coming up on stream when there's a new follower? I haven't been paying attention to um, OBS. There should be new notifications popping up on stream. For you guys to see anyway. Uh, Uh, let me catch up here. Android Lust says, I understand being tired at the end of the day, Hambone. I can, that can kill motivation. It can. And Shag says, uh, how are you? I'm good. No problem on the name. Uh, not even I can speak my name. It's all good. <laughs> well, I'll call you Chag. So every time you pop into chat, I'll be Chag. I should remember that. But I'm good. Thanks for asking. Are you good? Android Lust says, hey to Chag. Um, now, is it unpigmented? Unpig... Mented, unpigmented, I'm assuming. <laughs> Hi to you and thank you for following uh, as well, unpigmented. Remember guys to join the Discord server if you haven't already, the Pildust 3 Discord. There's the link I've just popped into chat. Um, only subs can post links in Twitch chat, but everybody can post links in the Discord server. And thank you Chag for the follow as well. I do appreciate it guys when you follow my Twitch channel, uh, Twitch, Twitter, Twitch, Twitch channel. <laughs> Uh, it's getting late in the day, uh, so thanks for following. Um, and Montresor says yes, it can make your present world more interesting looking. Uh, Chag says I'm great, trying to work on my 3D scene renders, but I'm stuck. What is stuck on Chag? If we can help, we can we can try and help you possibly. Um, that's the other reason I'm. Uh, you guys should jump jump on the Discord server. Join the Phil Does 3D Discord. Pardon me, because there's a really helpful group of people who are very talented that jump on the Discord server there that are members of the Phil Does 3D Discord uh, who can help you out if you have any questions. I'm not saying that they'll know everything, and I I, I pop into Discord uh, when I'm not streaming as well, so. If you've got any problems while you're doing your 3D stuff, you can pop on the, the Discord server, ask a question, and me or somebody else will get back to you, hopefully with an answer if we know. <coughs> Montresor says, um, 
Let me just get a drink, actually. I've got a tickle in my throat. Montresor says, but I can't transport you. But it can't, can't transport you completely to a different vista. Chag says, uh, creativity blur, don't know where to, where to go. Smurfery says, have you considered setting everything in the scene on fire? <laughs> um, what do you mean, Chag, creativity blur? I'm just not sure what you mean, Chag, by a blur. You're saying you don't know where to go. So you, you've got like a block, a creativity block, you're not sure what to make, is that what you're saying? If that's the case, then um, Android Lust says to Chag, uh, when I get a cre cre creative blur, I just sleep on it. Well, that's true too. Hopefully I could subconsciously figure it out. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Look at places like ArtStation for inspiration. Don't steal the ArtStation, other people's work. But certainly go to places like ArtStation if you need inspiration to create something. You're just not sure what you want to do. Look at other people's work and see what you like and maybe you can come up with an idea that's that, that maybe that will inspire you to create to come up with a creative idea uh, if you're stuck on a particular problem in 3d like i said jump on the discord and ask a question or as has been said it sometimes is really helpful just to um just to sleep on a problem because a product can that can oftentimes help you work it out the next day And Smurfery says, and add more fire. <laughs> uh, Andrew Lost says to Smurfery, fire hurts my old CPU. <laughs> we need to find one more texture. I'd like to get this one textured up before I finish for the day. So I just want one more thing to add to it. I've got to find something interesting we can mix over the top of it. Uh, no, it's not going to work. Now this is a forest ground, but it could be used as like a lichen. Let's see. Let's let's throw this one down on top of it. Oh, okay, that's leaves. I, in the small thing here, it looked like a lichen. It's just actually leaves, so that won't work. I'm sure we'll find something here that will. Let's try this one. Uh, well, let me just see what parameters I can change here. I'm going to turn the rocks off. We can use this as like a lichen cover, so the first thing I'm going to do is scale it up a bit. Um, just trying to look for that hole. There we go. Just want to get rid of that. And let's just play with our scale here a little bit. No, I've got to remember this. This is not very big. This this piece is quite small here on top of the model, so I want to try and avoid scaling it too high. I'm just going to pull back a little bit on the scale here, I think. And let's uh, use a smart mask. And let's go with... Um, let us go with, with this one. Now, this is a rust, but just because it's called rust doesn't mean we can't use it for something else. Um, Okay, what is going on here? I've just turned on the invert here. And I'm just wondering why we're not uh, getting it showing up. It's the curvature amount. The curvature was turned down too far. Well. 
so... I actually don't think that that um, I'm actually going to remove that smart mask, I don't like that. Let's try a different smart mask. Uh, let's go with... Um, we do have one called Moss from Top. That could be interesting. Uh, let's have a look. This one might be a bit better, I think. Gives us a bit, it's a nicer looking interplay mix. A lot nicer looking mix. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, let's turn up the triplanar blending. Let's look at the grunge amount here. Ambient occlusion all the way up. Curvature pretty much all the way up. World space normal, no uh, scratches. Okay, no scatter. Smurpery says, Will have you considered setting the ring on fire? <laughs> ah, Smurpery. Uh, that, that'll probably be okay for what we want. I just wanted like uh, a little bit of moss growing on that cement ring a little bit. But I think I'm worried that we might have lost the underlying layer. I'm just going to turn that off and have a look. No, 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 the underlying layer is still there. That's, that's good. That'll be fine. Uh, but we can play quickly with the uh, blend mode here. I just want to see what pass through or multiply looks like. Uh, let's try subtract. Difference. And overlay and soft light. No, we'll go. We'll go back to a normal blend. Let us send this back to Max now. So export textures. It's going to put it in its own folder. I'm going to be saving it as. I'll leave this one as a 1K texture actually, because it's a small ring at the very top of the um of the model. There are our textures. That's good. Let's just make sure we did a save. Now we can close that down. And let's load up our texture. Uh, again, as I've explained, I can't install the um, Substance plugin because of Max 2020 being too new. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to have to use a standard material here. It's not going to look correct because we don't have specular or anything. But it's really just for me so I know what's textured and what's not before we start doing our beauty render. Let's turn on show shaded and assign the material. Okay, that should be good. Well, we're getting there. We'll work our way down to texture up the rest of this, these bits and pieces. But I think we might leave it there for today, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Um, I do want to thank you though very much for hanging out with me and watching and being here. Uh, Chag is asking me, do I work on games? Uh, I used to work in games and then I worked in film. Now I work in ArchBiz. Uh, and I'm going to be making a game using UE4 um, after this project or a little bit later in the year. I made a project in UE4 last year, a cinematic. And we're going to turn that cinematic house in the hollow that I made into a game later on using UE4. Um, but if you if you want to look at that project, you can look in the video section on my Twitch page, or you can go to my YouTube channel, Phil Does 3D, because they're all on YouTube and they're also under the videos on my Twitch page there. Um, you're quite welcome. Chag says, "Thank you, man. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And check out and check your stream out." I'll be here as often as I can while I stream live every Monday and Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. You're always welcome, Jack. All you guys and girls are welcome. And I do appreciate you guys hanging out with me today and watching. 
Uh, I'll be back again on Monday next week at 5 p.m. Pacific. Galen, you're popping in right at the end of my stream. It's good to see you, Galen. I hope you're well. Um, yes, but I, I'll be back again live on Monday. So late, Galen. Yes, so late, right when I'm signing off. But it's good to see you, Galen. I hope you're well. I hope everything's good. It's been great to see you guys and girls. Not for sure. It was great to, he to hear from you and to talk to you as well. You lost track of time. That's understandable, Galen. I get that. Like I said, I get it. Much love to you too, Montresor. And um, yep, thanks again, guys, for being here and watching. I'll be live again on Monday next week, 5 p.m. Pacific US time. You guys and girls have a great weekend. And uh, I'll see you all again on Monday next week. See you guys.